My name is John Ross from the Art of Retouching Studio. In this video, I will introduce you to three important topics that are essential to working with digital images in Photoshop. And these are pixels, image size, and image resolution. Having a solid understanding of how they are related to each other is essential for getting the best results when resizing images, both for print and for the web. Let's take a look at image resolution and how you can make it work for you. Simply put, resolution is the amount of detail that's available for an image. 1 million pixels equals 1 megapixel. So, a 36 megapixel camera can provide substantially more detail than a 12 megapixel camera. As long as your image is sharp and in focus, then the higher resolution equals more detail. But, the confusing part is that there are two different kinds of resolution. The first kind of resolution refers to pixel count, which is the actual number of pixels that create your photo. In order to calculate this resolution, you just use the same formula you would for the area of a rectangle. Multiply the length by the height. For example, if you have a photo that is 6,000 pixels on the horizontal side and 4,000 pixels on the vertical side, this gives you a total of 24 million pixels. As I just said, this would be 24 megapixels. The other kind of resolution is about how you actually distribute the total amount of pixels that you have, which is referred to as pixel density. This is also commonly known as PPI, or pixels per inch. What do I mean by distribute? Well, your phone's camera will likely have a default value of 72 PPI. A DSLR camera that goes through Lightroom will have a default value of 240 PPI. However, the industry standard for printing is 300 PPI. On the surface, this looks like we have three completely different values. However, if they're all based on 24 megapixels, then they're all the same. They just happen to be arranged differently. Think of the pixels as water. Eight ounces of water is always eight ounces of water. It doesn't matter if you put it into an eight ounce cup, a 16 ounce cup, or spill it all over the floor. So, if a 24 megapixel image equals eight ounces of water, then you can understand that nothing changes no matter what you do with it. Think of pixels as bricks. If you have a patio paved with bricks, its size is determined by the amount of bricks that you have, right? And if you want to measure that patio, one way could be to count the bricks. A patio that is 20 bricks tall by 30 bricks long consists of 600 bricks total. It does not matter if it's wide, tall, or a straight line. 600 bricks will always be 600 bricks. What matters is how you arrange them. 600 bricks will always be larger than a patio with 300 bricks and smaller than a patio with 1,000 bricks. Simple. Switch those bricks to pixels, and now you're beginning to see that the number of pixels in an image file, or available on your DSLR sensor, directly determines how big the image size will be. The greater the number of pixels in an image, the denser the picture information, and therefore the higher the resolution. Higher resolution provides more detail within your image, and this allows for printouts larger with smooth, continuous tone and color accuracy. When it comes to understanding digital image resolution and how it pertains to image size, all that matters is the number of pixels contained within the file. It's not about DPI, PPI, or how many inches that Photoshop says that your photo is. What matters is the area resolution of the file, which is measured in pixels. When people talk about the resolution of an image file, what they're really talking about is area resolution, because this dictates how large the file really is. A key concept you need to understand is effective resolution. This is simply the final resolution of any picture at the actual size that it's placed within a document. This is really quite simple. Let's say that you have a picture with a full background and then later most of it background is cropped out. This is why you may have heard of 300 DPI being an industry standard. If half is cropped out, it can still be printed at 150 LPI, lines per inch, which is the front cover of a magazine. I have another video that deep dives into the relationship between dots per inch, pixels per inch, and lines per inch. You can find the link for that in the description below. Now, as I just said, your image may need to be cut in half. This is why photographers want high megapixel cameras. It allows for extreme cropping. This is because the high number of pixels to start with. If your subject is noticeably small in the frame, you may still be able to crop in and get the shot. For example, Many years ago, I knew a photographer who had gotten a brand new D800 Nikon camera, which is 36 megapixels. He felt that the size of the image was just too large, and back then it really was. So inside of the camera, he scaled it down to 24 megapixels. He had taken the photograph of the model from the top of his head down to his knees. Then he gave the image to me. He told me that he wanted it cropped at the waist. 
However, when I finished retouching, he told me that the image was too small and needed to be larger. So, if you start doing the math, the 36 megapixels went down to 24 megapixels. I then cut it in half, which burned it down to 12 megapixels. When he said it was too small, I needed to have Photoshop make up pixels and bring it back up to 18 megapixels. This never would have happened if he had just shot it at the full 36 megapixel size to begin with. Now this introduces another resolution issue, which is the overly enlarged image. This occurs when someone wants to take a really small image and enlarge it to fit their design. While it is true that you can enlarge an image safely, going beyond a certain size will result in a degraded or often pixelated, blocky looking image. It is generally recommended that you do not enlarge pictures more than 150% of the original size, starting at 300 ppi. Pictures enlarged beyond 125% will show some degradation, and enlarging an image beyond 200% can result in the actual pixels becoming visible. When you ask Photoshop to blow up pixels, it has to take similar pixels and create new pixels between them. This is called interpolation. For example, if you have a red pixel and a blue pixel, it's going to put a mixture of the two pixels in between, which is a purple pixel. When Photoshop has to create new pixels or remove pixels, it's basically just making things up as it goes along. And ultimately, the more you work on your final image, the more damage that has been done to it. But if you're always working on the highest quality images that you possibly can from the very beginning, you can get away with a lot more by the time you're done. One last big topic. Think back to the old video games of the 1970s and 80s where all of the little characters were very jagged. This is called aliasing. Aliasing is where the jagged or sawtoothed appearance of curved or diagonal lines on a low resolution display. Back then, the low resolution characters looked fine when they were shown on low resolution displays. But on today's high definition displays, they need to be blown up and they look bad because they're just blocks of solid color. When blowing up images, Photoshop is going to compensate for that aliasing with what's called anti-aliasing which means that it's going to soften the pixels around other pixels in order to give it a smoother transition. The problem is that this ultimately leads to softer looking images. Here's a silly story, but it is one of the best ways I've ever had resolution explained to me. Imagine you work in a kitchen and you've just made a pizza pie. It's a nice big round pizza and it has all the ingredients on top and you haven't had lunch yet. So you take away a slice of pizza and you eat it. Well, we can't let everyone know that you did that, right? So. You kind of flatten it out and you mush it together so that you can fill in the missing gap. No one's really going to notice because you had enough information to begin with so that it still looks good. But you're still hungry, so you take a second slice. Well now you've technically taken two slices out of that pizza. So once again you mush it and you push it all back together again. To do this you had to make it a little bit smaller than intended and you had to make it a thin crust because you've just eaten two slices. There still is enough information that you can technically get away with it and that no one's really going to question it. However, you're still hungry and you take another slice. Now you have a problem. You take that pizza and you mush it together and you try to make it smaller with the thinnest crust possible. But all of the ingredients fall off the crust and through the middle because it's just too thin. So, if you were to compare this to resolution, if you start with the largest size image possible from your camera, then you can get away with a lot. As long as the image was sharp to begin with, you can scale the image bigger or smaller because you had all the original information to start with. However, if you keep cropping your image, blowing it up, shrinking it, and doing other damage to it, eventually it will fall apart. Just as bad, saving it as a JPEG more than once, and you will have a real mess on your hands. So when is resolution irrelevant? This happens at the tipping point when your effective resolution is significantly lower than the actual resolution. If you have a 24 megapixel camera, this should cover most of your needs because that's about 13 inches by 20 inches. So if you have a 36 megapixel camera, then all the better. You have enough starting information to crop down, blow up, and do whatever you want. But after that, 50 megapixels, 75 megapixels, or even 100 megapixels, it's complete overkill. I once started working on a 100 megapixel image, and in my first two steps, it created a 2 gigabyte file. I had not even started working on the file yet, I barely prepped it. I needed to come up with a completely different workflow. While the obvious answer is to simply work on images at their full camera size, this isn't always the case or even practical. I once did a composite that took two 36 megapixel images and put them together, plus I added to the top, bottom, and the sides. This thing was huge, and because it was a composite, I was adding layer after layer. 
I was working in 16-bit depth, and this file was so large, I had to start using something called a linked smart object. Working with this was painfully slow, and the computer wanted to die. And in the end, it printed at 10 inches tall. To this day, I still wonder why I went through all of that. I should have just worked on it as a single 36 megapixel image, scaled everything else down instead of everything else up. I should have just kept in mind what that effective resolution was going to be. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification. I hope this video better helps you understand resolution, pixel count, and pixel dimensions as well as area size, aliasing, anti-aliasing, and interpolation. If you like this video, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can find more tips and tricks to make you a better photo retoucher.